This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a really easy one. This is an Affinity washing machine that won't go to the final spin. We're going to be replacing this little part called the wax motor and it'll just take you about 20 minutes to do it. First thing, we'll go ahead and use a standard head screwdriver to pry out this metal ring. This is kind of like a clamp that holds the rubber boot in position. And then we're going to peel back the boot and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove two screws that are holding on the door lock. The old wax motor on the old door lock is just no longer doing its job. So we're gonna disconnect these three modular connectors just going to pinch in and wiggle them off and then we're going to use a standard head screwdriver to gently pry this lock assembly apart into two halves and that's going to make it really easy to take out the white wax motor and we're going to be replacing it with a red one so if you have a black wax motor or a white one that means it's pretty old and the newer ones are going to be this red or burgundy color so I'm prying the lid lock into two pieces. I want to be careful when I separate them because the one half is the top half. The bottom half has all the pieces in it and you don't want those pieces to fall out. So just very carefully separate these two halves and you'll see that one half has all the goodies and the other half is just hollow and that's the one we're going to take off. All right, we almost got it. There we go. So that's the top half comes off. And basically what we got to do is use one thumb to kind of push down on the area in front of the wax motor as we just gently wiggle the old wax motor out. So here's the part number for the new wax motor. You can get these at Amazon. They're probably 17 bucks with tax. We replace these as appliance technicians all the time on these front load washing machines because they just kind of wear out over time. So I'm going to press down with the one thumb and then wiggle and lift the old one off. It comes out of these little slots. <clears throat> Take your time. There we go. And then the new one, I'll go ahead and just do the opposite. I'll put it down in the slot, push down, kind of wiggle it back in. And once that's in, we're pretty much done. We just take the uh, empty half and we put it back on top and we push it down. I did notice though that this one brass piece, this one we call a terminal, had some oxidation on it. So I'm going to pull it out by just gently wiggling and pulling up. It comes right out. And I'm going to clean off some of that carbon carbonization um, that comes from whenever a spark is created. It creates a little bit of uh, corrosion or carbonation. So I'm going to just take my standard head screwdriver and I'm just going to scrape that off. And that's the contact that closes, that tells the controller that the door is locked and allows it to go to high speed spin. But if that thing is too corroded, uh, that'll never happen. So that could be what was causing our no high speed spin. The other part could be that the wax motor was worn out. It wasn't moving the black piston far enough to the left to close those two contacts. It's one of, one of those things or maybe a combination. So we've ruled out both now by putting in a new wax motor, cleaning the contact. We can put that piece back in and then we can close it up and just press it shut. It'll, it'll click back into place. It's really easy to do. All right, we're just going to do the reverse now. We're going to put it back behind the boot, grab those three uh, modular connectors, and we'll put them back. You can't get this part wrong because they can only go in one way. So if you're pushing one on, it doesn't seem to fit. Just flip it around. That's the gray one goes in the middle, black one on top, blue one on the bottom. 
fluid and goes on the wax motor. And then that's it. Put that back in. We're gonna go ahead and add the two Phillips head screws. Get those tight. All right, we're gonna use our thumbs to put this rubber seal back over the metal lip all the way around, making sure it's fully seated. The other thing that can cause a no spin is a faulty motor controller. This is less common, but it's also pretty easy to replace that. More commonly, it's this lid lock has stopped working. So I didn't put the ring back on because I just want to test it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the drain and spin. This model, I'm just pressing the um, spin button until I get to high speed spin. I started up and ended up with really good spin again. So I know it's fixed. So now I'll add the ring. I lubricated the ring with some liquid detergent first. I put it on the 12 o'clock position I use my thumbs to push down and separate the ring and get the spring down at the six o'clock position back in. We'll close the door and we've got another maybe eight years of good spinning again. It's pretty easy to do. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.